Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks of Guns. I'm here at Rain City Shooting Center in Kent, Washington, who are, let's call them the sponsors of this video because they very kindly allowed me to shoot a gun and do a video here in their classroom. So, this year at SHOT Show, TSIS announced that they would be introducing a 2011. Now they make a lot of 1911s, this will be their first 2011. And, and they said that it would be available in first quarter 2024. And in what may be a first in the firearms industry, the gun was actually available in the first quarter of 2024. There are several versions. This is the basic full-size version, which has a MSRP, as I said, of $799, which is pretty exceptional. Now, last year, Gerson introduced a 2011, they call the 2311, I think. Um, that's under a thousand. And this comes in well below that, which is pretty neat. Um, it has really nice combat style sights. The front sight is narrow with a dot. Rear sight is serrated black on black, which I like. It uses standard STI style 17 round magazines and uh, looks pretty well put together. Let's go to the tabletop and do the pseudo opening because I've already fired this gun. Okay, a couple things going on here. It's the first time I've used this phone. It's a new phone for recording. And uh, I'm at, of course, the classroom here where I have to set up differently than normal. So it's a little odd. I'll try to keep things centered. So what we have here is obviously a 2011 polymer lower, Metal frame, steel slide, bushing barrel, no guide rod, decent sights, an RMSC cut standard from the factory, rail underneath with multiple slots, very nice. Flat face trigger that is, um, does not seem to have an over travel stop. Ambidextrous safety, Nice speed bump on the grip safety. Safe grip safety is, eh, you know, standard quality commercial blending. And uh, the trigger, eh, maybe four and a half, five pounds. Reset is pretty good. 1911 short and maybe a little good for a 1911. For the sights, you have a fixed rear sight with a ledge for emergency cocking, black serrated with an outline, and then the white front, not a colored outline, it's just the part where the sight is, isn't serrated. And then you have a comparatively narrow front post, which I actually like really well because you've got a lot of light on the sides, you can see the target really well, with a dot that is, it does not appear to be glow in the dark and it is certainly not tritium. But for $800, it's kind of as expected. Um, fit and finish is fine. Seems pretty good. Seems like a nice Cerakote finish. And the texture on the grips, there's checkering at the front and on the back, and moderate texture on the sides. I found it fine. So it's a fine gun. The sights are fine. The trigger's fine. The texture's fine. Everything's fine. And uh, it's it's nice. Take down is standard 1911. There's some stuff I want to look at inside, so we will actually do that. Need to turn that. Come on, there we go. Remove the mainspring plug. Let it roll off the table. Drop it back. Pop out the. Comes apart easily. Looks nice. And there is a very standard looking GI style guide rod. And the barrel, which you will note. Is a Clark Para ramp. Full ramp. Full support. Very nice, decently polished feed ramp. 
And uh, yeah, all very basic and pretty much exactly what you'd expect. I'm not seeing any exceptional or unusual wear marks from firing. It is dirty, of course. And of course, it goes back together in the standard fashion, exactly as you would expect it to. Take a minute to get that accomplished. You know, there's nothing in this takedown that a GI in World War I would not have been familiar with. This is, of course, a Series 70 gun, so there is no coordination on the part of the video guy. Uh, so there is no firing pin block in Series 80 style firing pin block. And uh, the frame looks very much like a standard 2011 frame. Everything is pretty much exactly as you would expect. And hallelujah, we didn't launch the spring retainer. Dude. Okay. So, it is pretty smooth. There's a little bit of movement in the slide. Not bad. You know, it's not as bad as the GI guns I had in the Army. And uh, it's quite, quite smooth in operation. And again, the trigger is fine. It's got all the features you would expect. And uh, I would say this is a duty quality gun. It is utilitarian. So let's take it to the range and see how it shoots. I should have said show you how it shoots because of course I had already shot it. I put 200 rounds or more of ammunition from four different manufacturers in two different bullet weights. It was all full metal case bullets. Um, but with the ramped barrel and the way the magazines sit, I'm pretty sure you're not gonna have a problem with hollow points or extreme defenders or anything of that ilk. So how does it shoot? It does what I have come to call the thesis thing. Everything's, when you look at the gun over and you check the trigger pull and everything, everything's good, but nothing's exceptional. It's just good, it's fine. Then you shoot it and it's exceptional. I have no explanation for this, but it's pretty cool. And of course, being me, all through shooting it, I was thinking, man, what I would do to that gun. I want one, I want one bad but it's not in the budget and I'm sad because I really like it and it's a serviceable, apparently reliable, accurate, easy to shoot 2011 for 800 bucks. What is not to love? I do love it. I think it's great. And uh, you know, I'm resisting the temptation to go all over fanboy on it, 
But you know, I've never handled, fired, or reviewed a bad gun from Tesis. I like the brand. And uh, I like this gun. And I think for $800, why wouldn't you? It's great. And at $800, it can become a platform for fine tuning and modifications to your heart's content. It's wonderful, and if it was in the budget, I would have one. If it was in the budget, I'd have two or three. Now, they make several versions of this. I believe the initial versions are the standard commander length, standard full size, and the Night Stalker in both standard and commander size. I might be wrong about that. But that's what I think I've seen. And I love that it comes with modern features. It's got the multi-slot Picatinny rail, which is standard Picatinny, not some proprietary crap. It has the good quality, fairly high sights. I don't know if they're suppressor height, but they're nice and tall. RMSC cut from the factory. There's a lot to like, there's nothing I don't like, and I think it's a great value for the money. So, there you go. Shout out to my supporters on Patreon. This all costs money and your contributions help more than you know. Also, check the link below to Ammo Squared, ammosquared.com, which is an ammunition subscription service that allows you to bank ammo and withdraw it as you need with a monthly payment. And if you check it out and decide to use their service using the link below, I get a little bit of bonus ammo for everyone who signs up which is no bad thing and helps the channel. So, i also like to thank Channel Benefactors. You know who you are and that I think you're wonderful and love you all. That's it for this time. Um, next time or shortly thereafter, we're going to be looking at the Nighthawk version of this and probably doing a bit of side-by-side -side comparison. So that should be fun. I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.